Today I'm in a Peugeot Expert and it's not starting, it won't even crank. I put the key in the ignition, turn it, I'm pressing the clutch here. Got the economy mode message up there, but nothing. So I'll maybe start plugging it in and see if it points me in a direction. Put the ignition on. See what battery voltage I've got. 12.2, it's a little bit higher with the ignition off. It's doing plenty of bleeping. So it's not equipped with an engine ECU. That could be something to do with it. I'll look in the BSA, see what those codes are. Well, no, look at them all, see what all the codes are. If the codes are because it's not seen the engine ECU, that's a direction to go in. Brake fluid level. I wouldn't stop it going, but we've got the no comes with engine ECU. Engine management. Fault or absence of communication with the engine management. And the hybrid. We don't have hybrid here. Hybrid management is permanent, so that's why it's not seen that, because it's not got it. Sometimes I'm finding this launch the definitions are a bit misleading. Engine speed information invalid. Well, it's not going to crank. It's not going to have an engine speed if it's not cranking. And the coolant temperature information is not there, so... Again, we need to go and see why the engine has no power. It might just be a fuse. Let's check the basics first. Next thing I checked after that was communication fault. That doesn't look a very good signal. This is only a one channel scope. So I just changed the lead. I've got can high, can low. They're both going like two and a half to four volts roughly. See there, two and a half to four. Put the other one in. That's going down. So can high and can low, they don't look good. Going into the ECU here, the engine ECU. Get the cage out of the way. That was my next thing to get to. If I unplug some wires, and I'll see if I get a better signal here. I'm going through disconnecting these. The first two. Didn't change it when I took the back plug out. And that's the one that I'm actually back probed into. The small one. I get a far better signal. Can I give this power probe power? It's going through the test light to a ground. I give it power, the test light lights. I've also got a ground light next to it. I'm going to test that one as well. I'm going to test on a test light. Nothing too powerful, but it's lighting that. Now I've got to find the powers that come in with the ignition. See down here, I've managed to get this going by jumping two wires that should both have power and only one of them has. I don't have a wiring diagram. The only thing I've got is pin data, so I knew which pins should have power, but it was slightly different, and I didn't have a wiring diagram. So, they're going through here, through this fuse, down there, and that's making the car start. One thing that might be an idea, I'm going to put a current clamp around these wires to know how much power is coming through this. It would be good to know how much power I've got going from one wire to the other. the current plan on the lower settings. I just gotta move the decimal points over one place to see what it is in amps versus volts because one millivolt 
is 10 milliamps. So let's see what that is. So that's nearly half an amp. That would be 430 because I've got to move it over. I made it volts instead of milliamps. And I've got to turn it by 10. So that would be 430 milli milliamps. So here's what the signal looks like. So it's this side with the ignition on that doesn't have power. A green lead. And that's going into the center plug, which is a brown wire. I put cable ties on to help identify it. And I'll see where that wire goes to now with the um, power probe wire tracker. Let's see if we can figure out where it's going. That's handy, I've found, finally found the brake, right there. Open the wiring up, and I was using this again. So I put it in, pulsing away at one side. And it's going through that green lead, and then I've just used a thin back probing pin going through the front. But it's not damaging it, because it's about the right size for the pin that orig would originally be there. And using this, I was getting a weaker signal when I came down here. I just tugged on the wire and it broke right there. So that's handy. I'll just show you something though, because a few people have asked me about this. So I'll put it next to the wire. You can hear it bleeping away. And when you find the same wire, like here, Leaping away, but sometimes you can get if you're on the wrong wire, or even here, I'm not even on a wire. I'm actually against against the engine, and it's still seeing open circuit. So sometimes you've got to keep looking for the the fastest beat. Um, if you use it to find a broken wire, though, it is it is pretty good for that. So now I can join that together, see if I've got power on the other side. That should be the car starts. I was going to be asked if I could join this together, the way that I jumped it with a fuse. If it was going to be too much of a pain. I came back to do that for them. But it just would have felt better knowing where the wire was broke, so I decided to go ahead and check that out. If it was going to take too long, I was just going to go for the other option, but in this case, I found it pretty quick. And I'm glad I did. So I'll just join that together. Check the other wires in that area. I'm going to use a test light and just check that wire that's right down here. Let me touch it. It lights. So that's, the, I don't know what the blue one is. That was also about ready to break. I tugged at it and it snapped. So that's just got some of these quick connectors that you just heat up. And the solder melts in the middle. And it seals it. But a bit of uh, wire I managed to get the same color. So that it's not going to be pulled too tight. So I'm just going to rebuild this all up. That should be it. The fault codes have erased. As you can see there, if it's not too blurry. So that's okay now. And the light's out. 